Welcome to Burt Ridgeway's Learning for Life. This is Lesson 5, Part 5, of She'll Be Coming Around the Mountain in this series, Learning a Tune from Scratch. And we have covered so much in our first four lessons. Things that you could be playing around with for weeks and weeks or months, at, to be honest with you, on the creative end of it. Uh, in our very first lesson, uh, and this is one example, I showed you using your voice and the scale how to pick out the melody line of the first phrase of the melody line of She'll Be Coming Around the Mountain using using your voice and playing the scale. And then I encouraged you to play the rest of the tune or figure out the rest of the tune, which is frankly work to do that, especially if you're not used to it. And as I said, it doesn't matter whether you succeeded at this point. It just matters that you tried and that you actually spent some time working on it. And then I ask you to take things like Mary Hell, Little Lamb, Three Blind Mice, and figure out the same thing. Start to try to pick it out by ear. So right there, you've got a lot of work and, and fun and practice to do because you can do something different every single day. And then we taught you the rest of the melody, and then we use the rhythm embellishment, which is another creative process. As many things as you can come up with in your head and then repeat that on your instrument. And then in lesson three, we played two different octaves. And then in lesson four, we noodled. And again, another creative process that you can spend days just playing around, trying to figure out different counter melodies. And again, as we get into this more, into other tunes and things that we do, you know, we're going to, we're going to rehash all this and, and go back over this again. Uh, I mentioned that I'm learning Spanish uh, with an app. And you go through different, I don't know what they're called, but different, you know, they have different titles for different lessons. And here's what I do. I do lesson one and two and three. And then I go back to one. And then I do two. And I think I'm up to like the 10th lesson or the 10th, pro, uh, you know, set of lessons. They're actually sets of lessons. And then I go back and I do three and four and then jump back to two. And I review constantly what I've learned already. So you've got a lot of work there. We're going to uh, spend the remaining lessons. And we have five, six, seven, and then we have a practice. So for three lessons, we are going to work strictly on chords. And I'm going to show you different ways to do it. And today we're just going to talk about specific chords for the tune. So we're going to kind of teach it using these chords, showing you how to work these chords. And then uh, we'll do it differently next time, maybe with arpeggios or something like that. So when we start the tune, again, if you don't have this memorized, go back and, and learn it. But we're going to play it. And I'm playing right, left, right. Now, we've got a D chord here. So, what we did is we have a triangle, we have a D chord right here. We're playing the F sharp, we're playing the A, and we're playing the D. You can do this by moving your left from the F sharp to the D. And just staying on the A, you can keep your left hand on the D. Moving your right hand up and down, whatever's comfortable. But we're, we're going to extend past this triangle. If you remember, you have a D on the left side of your treble bridge. To find this identical note an octave lower, to find another D, you go from mark to mark and up one. So this is often referred to as a diamond chord. One thing that I would do is sit here and do this over and over and play it this way. Hard, soft, soft, 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 hard, soft, soft. By the way, try to carry on a conversation or say the Pledge of Allegiance while you're doing this. 
because that will tell you if you're doing it correctly and whether you really have it down. Now, it doesn't matter if you play it like I showed you. You could play it this way. My right hand is simply going from the A to the D, and my left hand is going from the D to the F sharp. When you're playing the chord, it doesn't matter the order. You could do this. Again, the right hand is just going back and forth, and the left hand is just going back and up a little. You could do it this way. So when you're playing the tune, that's actually going to be your melody. And again, why I'm having you playing it hard, soft, soft, hard, soft, soft, hard, soft, because you want to emphasize the melody. Or... Sorry. Moving on. Now we've got another triangle. And again, we can throw this D in. So, let's start at the beginning. I did a little different there. Now, when we come over here to this E, we're going to use this triangle. Again, you want to get comfortable. Now, you can actually throw in this E. Now, the reason you can do that is because we are now playing this E here. To find this note on the bass, go more above a mark, go straight across above a mark, and up one. I'm not saying you need to do that, I'm just saying it's an option. So, so here's this triangle again. Let's do it from the beginning. Diamond chord. Diamond chord. Triangle. And we're throwing that in. A different shape of a triangle. Now we're here. We're back to this note again, so we got the same triangle. So you can see how when you come to a certain course of strings, you can use a different pattern. So again, from the beginning, very slowly.
different triangle. So now we have, we're over here on the B. We're playing a G chord here. So we're playing the B, the D, and the G. Now, if you remember when we were on the left side of the treble bridge and we used this shaped triangle, we're just moving it over. So. use a diamond or just the triangle sorry and then we're back to the same triangle here Again, I'm thinking way too much, but you can see how you could do this. Now, basically what I'm showing you is you're playing your melody here with the left hand. We're kind of using left hand chords and, and there's different things we can do here, but Should have been there. I'm trying not to think so much. So what I want you to work on, and I'm just going to review, here is the diamond chord that we used. We use this triangle, we use this triangle, and we use this triangle, and we use this triangle. So I've got a bit of homework for you. If you want to know the notes in a chord, you take the first, third, and fifth note. So just as an example, let's let's do our an A scale. A, B, C, D, E. I know that's a sharp. A, B, C, sharp, D, E. You take the first, third, and fifth. So you have an A, C, E. So the three notes in, a, in an A chord are A, C, sharp, and E. So we're playing in the key of D. The three chords we're going to be playing are D, G, and a. So here's your homework. Let's say you want to know what a D chord is. D, F sharp, A. So it's a D, an F sharp, and an A. So how do you know what chord you're playing? This is a D. This is an F sharp. This is an A. This is a D. So right now you're playing a D chord. So we played this triangle right here. Let's see what notes we have here. We have a, an, uh, an A, an E, and a C sharp. We learned earlier when I gave you the example of the A, that's an A chord. Okay, then we, we played this note. Or this chord. 
So we have a D, we have an A, we have an F sharp. You understand what we're doing here? What I want you to do is go through the tune, figure out what this chord is. Same chord. Figure out what chord this is. So in this chord, we're using the A, the D, and the F sharp. If you remember, that's what we did here. A, D, F sharp. A, D, F sharp. B, D, and G. What chord is that? I'm just going to give you a clue. Start your scale with a G. And figure, that'll kind of tell you. But you see what we're doing here. So go through and figure out each chord on your own, what you're playing. And really what you're going to be thinking about is D, G, or A. Okay, so I think, I think you kind of get what we're doing. If it's a D chord, you've got D, F sharp, and A. D, F sharp, and A. If it's an A chord, it's A, C sharp, and E. And if it's a G chord, it's G, B, and D. So I hope this has helped. This is taken a little deeper than we normally go, but I want you to try to understand what you're doing in this particular lesson using the patterns that we showed. And again, remember, there's all kind of patterns that we can use. I'm just giving you these specific ones to work on and figure out. I hope you're really enjoying these lessons. I hope they're helping. I hope they're kind of opening up your eyes to some things that you can do on your instrument. The only reason these lessons are free and available without becoming a part of a, a school or becoming part of a of charging or a subscription rate or paying per lesson. The only reason everything is free and it is all free is simply because there are those who are giving back, those who are participating in their own learning process by supporting their own learning process, by helping and investing in their own learning process. So I want to thank my patrons for making this possible. If you're learning from this course, if you're taking this course, I'd ask you to consider becoming a patron. When you become a patron, uh, you, you get two or three different things because really, you know, some people offer tab or they offer this or they offer music. I, I'm giving you everything free. So whether you support or not, you're getting everything free. It's just a different approach. But you do get a sticker that says, I support traditional music. It says, Burt Ridgeway's Learning for Life. I do not sell them. You could offer me $20 for one and I will not sell you one because they are strictly for patrons. And at the $5 level, you get that sticker absolutely free. And then... You are invited and welcome to a monthly live stream Zoom workshop. And I often charge for those, uh, not to the patrons, but again, that's a $15, $20 value right there. We meet for an hour once a month, get together, talk. Uh, we do, are doing a teaching jam at this point, uh, and we're going through different things that, like that. Uh, and some of the workshops are ones that I've taught, overcoming fear, you know, that you would actually pay for. And then, of course, and this is very sincere, the most important reason is you are literally and really investing in your own learning process. And when you have that kind of investment, you learn better. I actually have people who don't play an instrument at all, people I don't know, not, not friends, people I don't even know who don't play an instrument at all, support through the Patreon program because they realize the importance of it. And some have actually started taking up an instrument because they're curious. They just like the idea of what I'm trying to do. So thank you, patrons. Thank you to all who are sharing. I hope, again, these, these lessons are helping a blessing. Please leave a comment uh, below. Let me know what you think. Let me know. And, and by the way, if there's something you don't like, please let me know what it is. Uh, don't just say, you know, don't like or whatever. People do that. 
because I can't fix something if I don't know what the problem is. And if, if there's not a problem, please let me know of your progress. Let me know how, you know, if you like the lessons. It's always encouraging to hear the positive. So thank you so much. We'll see you next week for your next lesson. God bless.